Hello. Uh, my name is Amritha Venkataraman, um, and I am the state director for HRC here in Michigan. Um, I was born in southeast Michigan, and I'm a proud graduate of Kalamazoo College. Um, I've worked on campaigns in seven states with candidates up and down the ballot, and I know that there is no better place to be right now than in West Michigan. Uh, so I could not be more excited to be here with all of you today. I started with the HRC in February of 2018, and I was so excited to join this historic organization. HRC is the world's largest LGBTQ civil rights organization and has been on the forefront of fighting for the LGBTQ community for the past 30 years. I know that we have so much power as a community when we stand up and we vote together, and I couldn't wait to be a part of that work right here in Michigan. For so many people around the country, 2016 was a tough election, and the LGBTQ community was no exception. Folks were unsure if we were witnessing the end of the rights we had worked so hard to achieve, and if history and progress were fundamentally moving backwards. In the face of this fear and uncertainty, HRC stepped up and doubled down on our commitment to fighting for the progress that our community has worked so hard for. Instead of backing down from a challenge, HRC committed to continue to fight for the Equality Act, a national non-discrimination ordinance that would help end the patchwork of protections that LGBTQ Americans face when they're moving around the country. But how are we going to do this? So in 2017, HRC launched its uh, largest grassroots expansion in the history of the organization. And we did this for a really simple reason. We knew that when we talked to our neighbors and had conversations, the numbers were on our side. Right here in Michigan, we have over 140,000 HRC members and supporters. We have over a million equality voters in the state who vote on LGBTQ issues as their number one issue. Michigan is a state where less than 11,000 votes can make the difference in an election. And we simply know that if we get all of our folks to the polls, equality will be reflected at the ballot box. So ahead of the 2018 midterm elections, we made another big move. HRC hired five staff on the ground full-time in Michigan. That was an unprecedented investment in the state. The staff were crucial in registering thousands of Michiganders to vote, by mail, online, and in person at countless pride festivals, community meetings, um, and other places around the state. We collected over 4,500 commit to vote cards the summer before the election and completed over 736 volunteer shifts. In the final four days before Election Day alone, HRC members and supporters knocked on over 2,600 doors in our targeted areas and sent over 6,000 text messages to our neighbors and friends, reminding them to get to the polls. I was incredibly grateful to be a part of the team here in Michigan that did all of that incredible work. Our members' dedication inspired me daily, and we got to see the direct result of that hard work paying off. In 2016, HRC was critical in electing not only um, Senator Debbie Stabenow back to the US Senate, but electing pro-equality Governor Gretchen Whitmer, State Secretary of State Dana Nessel, and right here in Kalamazoo, helping to elect State Senator Sean McCann. Um, this is the legacy of our work in Michigan and the work that I am so excited to continue into 2018. This was such a bright spot for so many of us, and we proved that what we do works. So we went into 2019 and we were really excited because we were finally going to get a vote on the Equality Act on the floor of the US Congress. This is a historic moment that was only possible because of the work we did, flipping seats to pro-equality champions in 2018. But during this historic vote, Congressman Fred Upton stood against progress and voted against the Equality Act and the interests of LGBTQ people all around the state, and against the interests of Michigan's 6th District. Time and time again, Congressman Upton has shown that he is out of touch with the values of Southwest Michigan. And that's why we're here today to make sure that we elect someone in November of 2020 uh, who can not only represent our community's interests, but is a member of our community. John Hoadley has been an outspoken advocate for the LGBTQ community and LGBTQ rights for the past decade. Over his career, he has fought and secured non-discrimination protections around the country. And over the past six years, John has been an outspoken advocate, not just for LGBTQ issues, but for voting rights, water safety, and education funding. 
HRC has over 55,000 equality voters right here in the 6th District. And we know that the time is now to mobilize all of our voters to elect a pro-equality champion. John Hoadley is a leader who will put people and community back at the center of our decisions. And HRC is proud to be an early endorser in this pivotal race. We're going to be making significant investments to make sure that Representative Hoadley takes a seat in the 117th Congress. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to welcome our future uh, U.S. Representative, John Hoadley. Thank you, Amritha. I really appreciate the introduction. And to everybody who's joining here today, I sincerely appreciate your support. Uh, today, we're actually making this announcement uh, in the IBEW Local 131 Hall. And so a sincere thank you to my brothers and sisters in organized labor who stand up every day to fight for working people. And this is an example of how together, whether we're wearing hard hats or looking at white collar jobs, that people of all stripes should have free and fair uh, opportunities for their lives and advancement from discrimination. And so I love to have this cross-sectional alliance. The announcement and endorsement today is close to my heart. The Human Rights Campaign is dedicated to providing full and equal protection under the law. Uh, as the nation's largest LGBTQ civil rights organization, to have their support at this point in the race speaks volumes about how we have a choice to make here in this congressional district. One that says we can move forward together where we are making sure that all people have a shot at the freedom and liberties that they deserve and no one is shut out or continued with the policies that haven't worked for the past 10, 20, or 30 years. And of course, uh, as a member of the LGBT community, this endorsement is personal to me. You know, I grew up uh, in the Midwest uh, and for all of my friends and family who have understood that process of finding yourself, making sure that your story is written as part of the American story, that we are see our lives represented in our communities and in our culture. The, the importance of having more openly LGBTQ members of Congress at those decision-making tables cannot be understated. We have an opportunity right now to break yet another ceiling here in Michigan. Uh, it would be a true honor and privilege to be elected the first openly gay member uh, of our congressional delegation because representation still matters. And when it comes to clear contrasts of vote, not just on LGBT issues, but across a variety of issues, from health care to clean water, to funding our schools, to making sure that we provide affordable housing. These are issues that require a new perspective and a lot of different voices at the table. As a state representative for the last five years, uh, I've been proud to fight for Michiganders uh, across the state in these key priorities. Leadership matters. Both the decisions that are made uh, on some of the largest issues and the decisions that you'll never read about in the newspapers. I've been proud to champion issues like expanding the Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act. So, we, so regardless of your sexual orientation or gender identity, all Michiganders would have a shot uh, for, to have opportunity for themselves and their family free from discrimination where they work, where they live, or where they play. At the same time, we need to pass that, uh, the Equality Act all the way through and sign that into law so regardless of whatever state you're in, you had that support and opportunity as well. As a state legislator, I've also made sure that we're working across the aisle whenever possible to fight for things like health care access or long-term care. These are the issues that I plan to continue championing as a member of Congress. But finally, I say this, this early work matters. The conversations that we'll have with our friends and neighbors over the next year is critically important because all of our voices matter and every one of our votes counts too. So regardless if we're in our urban centers or walking down those longer driveways uh, in the, in our rural, with our rural neighbors, the point is clear. The future of our country, the choices that we make will be determined on the ballot in November of 2020. 
I know with the help of the Human Rights Campaign that we're going to turn out those pro-equality voters, the folks that think we all do better when everyone does better. And so I am sincerely pleased to accept this endorsement. I'm excited for our partnership and to the thousands of members of the Human Rights Campaign here in Michigan and in the 6th Congressional District and to the million members across the country, I thank you for your support and let's go win. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. Um, I cannot wait to see you as a member of Congress and to get to talk to all of our members and supporters and voters in the 6th District over the coming months. Um, so to find out more about what is happening, we want everyone to get engaged. We can't do this work or make sure this election goes well without every single person stepping up and doing a little bit. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter, HRC underscore MI, or our HRC in Michigan Facebook group. And of course, follow our wonderful endorsed candidate at John Hoadley on Twitter to make sure you stay up to date on all of the latest news. Thank you so much, and I can't wait to work with you. They're GIF. It's a soft chat. Okay. <laughs> Let's debate this. We're going to have a fight. <laughs> Here, you can do an equality voter if you want. I'll do a quality voter, and you hold the John Hoagland one. Yeah. <laughs>